Hello and welcome. In this short presentation, we would be talking about the mass spring damper system model, given the ordinary differential equation or ODE for short, we will obtain normalized ODE, then we can solve for initial conditions to obtain integration constants from characteristic polynomials. This will be a discussion about discrete systems with one degree of freedom or DOF for short and finding out the eigenvalues. MATLAB simulation is provided for finding different parameters, such as damping coefficient and angular frequency, and how the system behaves. We are keeping it simple just one degree of freedom. When we are talking about the equations of motion, we are especially looking at the equation of motion for translational motion, meaning we have one translational coordinate. The model we will be looking at will be the model for vertical dynamics of a car, and we will apply the simplest model we can use for this purpose. A mass, which represents the mass of the car, the stiffness C which deals with the stiffness of the suspension system, and the damping factor K which represents shock absorbers, the dampers in the suspension system of a car. The differential equation that describes this system is a homogeneous second-order ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients. In the rest of the presentation, we will use the abbreviation ODE, meaning ordinary differential equation. So, now we start with this differential equation and rearrange as m times x double dot equal to minus k times x dot minus c times x. We can divide this equation by the mass m, which then yields the equation x double dot equal to minus k divided by mass times x dot minus c divided by mass times x. Now, we can do two substitutions. First, we substitute. 2 times delta is equal to k divided by m and angular frequency or omega naught squared equal to c divided by m. This looks very special. And the question is, why do we do this? Well, now we have reduced the number of parameters that describe the system. Now, the equation looks as x double dot equal to minus 2 delta times x dot minus omega not squared times x. We can move the right hand side equal to 0 by moving 2 delta x dot plus omega not squared time x to the left side. You will see that the three parameters k, m, and c are now replaced by just two parameters, delta and omega naught. This means that the differential equation system can cover different models, which are based on different values for m, k, and c, but with the same values for delta and omega naught. In fact, we now have a normalized homogeneous second-order ODE. And normalized means that there is no longer an effector in front of x double dot, and homogeneous means that the right side of the equation is equal to zero. Of course one can argue which part of the equation can be found on the left-hand side, and which part of the equation on the right-hand side. In order to define a homogeneous ODE based on the fact that on the right side there is just a zero, we need a rule in order to know what we can collect on the left side. Obviously, as you can see on the left side, we collected all those terms which somehow deal with x, x dot, and x double dot. So, that is the rule. Collect everything that deals with x, x dot, and x double dot on the left hand side, then, if nothing is left on the right hand side, we call this a homogeneous differential equation. Now, if we look at this ODE, we can also name the coefficients that we have introduced. The coefficient delta is the so-called damping coefficient. This coefficient gives the answer to the question. How fast is the oscillation damped out? If we look at omega naught, then, we are talking about the angular eigenfrequency, and this angular eigenfrequency gives us the answer to the question. How fast does the undamped system oscillate? Let's have a look again at the equation of motion and find the solution to this equation of motion. This brings us back to the ODE system, and the question is, what is a suitable approach? Or what is a suitable solution approach to this differential equation? Here, we can use a so-called standardized approach for this solution. The standardized approach is an exponential approach, where x equals k times exponential of lambda times t where k and lambda are some constants. And you know that the exponential function exp of x is very simple, especially with regards to finding the derivatives, so x dot equals k times lambda times exponential of lambda times t and x double dot equals k times lambda squared times exponential of lambda times t. It is very easy to write down these equations, and as shown. 
Putting these values in the original ODE we have the equation, k times lambda squared times exponential of lambda times t, plus 2 into delta times k times lambda times exponential of lambda times t, plus omega, not squared times k times exponential of lambda times t and this whole equal to 0. Now, we can apply this approach to the original ODE. We can divide both sides by k times exponential of lambda into t, because we can be sure that this is never equal to zero, and this leads to the so-called characteristic polynomial. This characteristic polynomial is lambda squared plus 2 delta lambda plus omega naught squared, and the whole sum is equal to zero. You can immediately see that there's quite a nice similarity between this characteristic polynomial and the differential equation itself. This allows us now to determine lambda. So if we look at this characteristic polynomial, we have to find the roots of this characteristic polynomial, and these roots are also called the eigenvalues. These roots can be found through a quadratic formula with a equals 1, b equals 2 delta and c equals omega naught square as mentioned. The simplified form for the eigenvalues can be found after putting for a, b and c, that is, lambda 1 comma 2, equal to minus delta, plus minus j multiplied with square root of omega, not squared minus delta squared. And obviously, the name eigenvalues have been chosen because we are investigating the eigenmotion or behavior of the system. You will also see that typically the roots of this characteristic polynomial are complex, which is denoted by j, the imaginary unit with j square being equal to minus 1. Now, if we have these eigenvalues, we can come back to the solution approach. Using the complete solution means that we must superpose the two solutions that we get rid from the two eigenvalues. So, there's one solution part dealing with the first eigenvalue lambda 1, and there's a second eigenvalue part that deals with the eigenvalue lambda 2. This also means that we have introduced parameters constants k1 and k2, and these constants k1 and k2 are so-called integration constants because they allow us to solve a second-order differential equation, and obviously if the differential equation system is of second order, we need to have two integration constants. The values of these integration constants can be derived from the initial conditions. Now, let's look at this problem. We have the general homogeneous solution. We can also find the equation that describes the first derivative. So the first equation that you see here is the equation for the position of the mass, and the second describes the velocity of the mass. Of course, we have initial conditions, where x0 is the value for the initial position of the mass, for t equals 0, and x.0 is the value of the initial velocity of the mass, for t equals 0. This means that we get two equations. In fact, these two equations form a linear equation system, where k1 and k2 as unknowns appear in linear mode, and this can be solved easily. We can multiply the first equation by either lambda 1 or lambda 2, and subtract the second equation, in this case, equation b from equation a. We will arrive to find k2, and then using the value of k2 in the equation we can find k1. And if you look closely at the formulas for k1 and k2, you will see that there's quite a similarity in the two equations. In fact, if you know the equation for k1, you will find the equation for k2 by just switching between lambda 1 and lambda 2. So finally we have some results. We started with a normalized homogeneous second order OD. We replaced the effectors k dividend by m and c divided by m by 2 delta and omega, not square respectively. We came up with a homogeneous equation, the homogeneous solution represented by one part dominated by the first eigenvalue, the second by the second eigenvalue, we set up the equations for the integration constants and also the equations of motion for the eigenvalues. Of course, we can use the mathematical model within MATLAB or Simulink. And from here we can then start with a MATLAB file. We define the mass of the body as m. Stiffness coefficient of spring k, damping coefficient is c, time of 0 to 1 seconds in increments of 10 milliseconds. Initial conditions set for displacement x0 equals 0 0.01, Initial condition of velocity x dot 0 equals 0, we then define symbolic time variable t in system function. We obtain first and second derivatives and store them in dx and d2x. 
The important function d solve solves the differential equation m d 2 x plus c d x plus k times x equals zero, given the initial conditions as stated. Finally, we convert the symbolic expression or function x and x dot to MATLAB functions with handles x and x dot respectively, and evaluate these functions at points of time. We can also find the maxima, the location of the maximum, time period, and both frequencies. The displacement and velocity profiles are plotted together for mass of 500 kg, c equals 25,000, and k equals 50. This corresponds to damping coefficient of 0.05 and angular frequency of 7.0711. This second plot is for mass of 200 kg, c equals 50,000 and k equals 25. This corresponds to damping coefficient of 0.0625 and angular frequency of 15.8114. Using the MATLAB code, one can have a more extensive analysis by looking at different values of mass, spring stiffness and damping coefficient, and also see the effects of initial conditions, and could have a better comparison. That's what you can see here, and the system parameters that were used for this simulation are the mass damping rate, the stiffness, and also initial conditions. Given an ODE, we can obtain normalized ODE by dividing both sides by mass of the body, then we can solve for initial conditions to obtain integration constants from characteristic polynomials. From such analysis one can find that, how fast is oscillation damped out, and how fast does the undamped system oscillate. Thanks for watching.